is, guys. It's your boy Blasphemous HD. Yes, I got robbed. Robbed like a motherfucker. Now, before I tell you guys this story, y'all have been asking me for this fucking story for literally, literally four years. Four years now. Now, a lot of you guys might ask me, well, bless me, Sage D, why did it take you so long before you told her the story? To be 100% real with y'all, man, I thought if I told y'all what happened, I could get myself put in jail because uh, I broke a lot of really serious laws in, in this story. And I had to make sure that I wouldn't be snitching on my goddamn self by telling y'all this. Some of you guys might even be asking, okay, well, why do you feel comfortable telling me now? The one thing that's kind of good about uh, telling things that's happened to you on the internet is, motherfuckers think you lying. That shit tends to work in my favor because if, you know, the police watch this and they ever come calling me and knocking on my door, I can just say, nigga, I was lying. It was a YouTube story. What's really fucked up is like all of my stories I've told are all real. But I always get a couple of comments and motherfuckers like, oh man, we don't believe you. We think you're full of fucking shit. This has been documented by the police, police reports, all that shit. All right. Now, just know this. This story is fucked. All right. Fucked. Completely fucked. It's probably the most unrealistic and action-packed sounding story you'll ever hear in your goddamn life. But I'm gonna tell the whole thing and I'm not gonna leave anything out. I'm not gonna, gonna cookie cutter the shit to make it not, to make me sound better or none of that shit, all right? Now one thing I want y'all to know before I tell y'all this story, look, one of the biggest reasons why I started telling the story is A, so I don't have to repeat the bitches whenever I meet new people. I can just give them the link. And two, wait, what? You guys understand that I've done dumb shit, all right? And all the shit I've done, yes, it's a great action-packed story, but this shit is stupid, okay? Don't, please don't do any, any of the shit that I do and or have done Okay, cuz I am lucky. I'm lucky not to have been shot, stabbed. I'm just fucking lucky. Like I said, a lot of kids watch this shit. Please don't fucking do none of the dumb shit I do. I'm not a thug, okay? I'm not a gangster, okay? I'm not crazy tough, alright? I'm not a street nigga or whatever that fucking crazy shit is, alright? I grew up in really fucked up areas and you adopt certain mannerisms and some of them get you in trouble. Some of them uh, get you into the shit. So with that being said, this is the story of how I got robbed at fucking gunpoint by my best friend, which got my brother KT closer to death than he's ever come in his life, which also resulted in the next thing that happened after that, a month and some change later, got me uh, uh, almost put in jail for about 10 years. Maybe only five. I don't know. It was fucked, okay? So this story is completely, completely fucked. We'll start at the very beginning where I met this son of a bitch at. Because it was a guy who I knew for like fucking, like years. Best friend. Or so I fucking thought, who robbed my house at fucking gunpoint. Okay, so what happened was this, right? Back when I used to live in Joshua Village Projects out here in Las Vegas, it's on like Cheyenne Las Vegas Boulevard or some shit, I was young as fuck, I was a fucking kid, and of course when you live in fucked up areas and you're a kid, there's nothing to really fucking do except for crime and females and video games in my boy, I, I kind of stayed away from a lot of crime. I tend to fuck with the video games for some reason. I, I'm a nerdy person. So... What happened was this, I met Rashad living at those fucked up areas, right? Now, I'ma put a picture of him, I'ma put a picture of the dude, mm, matter of fact, no, you know what? I'm not gonna show his picture because like that shit could get me in trouble with the fucking law because this shit really fucking happened. He probably wouldn't tell the police though because you know, he's a drug dealing criminal. But uh, okay, so anyway what happened was I became friends with this guy named Rashad Banks you know, I thought he was a fucking good friend of mine. I 
really liked the dude. We had a lot of crazy misadventures living in the projects. Uh, a good amount of which are on my gaming channel. I've told like 95 fucking stories over there of shit that's happened to me. A lot of them fucking crazy and they sound unbelievable. But what's funny is I actually leave shit out to make them not as bad as they really fucking were. So, after I moved out of the projects, I lost contact with dude for about six years. I ended up running into him again. Because his baby mama, who was just his girlfriend at the time, ended up befriending my sister who was living with me at the time and was trying to fuck. The thing is, I didn't smash. I ain't. Now, it's funny because after like three weeks of her trying to fuck with me, I had a living girlfriend, so I mean, you know, nothing happened. She ended up talking about her boyfriend and, and I was like, oh, that's crazy, dude. What, you know, oh, that, sound, that dude sounds familiar. What's it look like? What's this looks like? She shows me a picture. I'm like, man, that's my homeboy. She's like, oh, what, Rashad? I'm like, yeah, Rashad. What the fuck? So, me and him ended up linking back up through her after not, like, seeing each other for six fucking years. When we started kicking it again, I was playing poker for a living, and I lived not in a nice part of Vegas. I didn't live in a nice part of Vegas yet. Like, lower middle class neighborhood. But my apartment was really fucking nice. And at the time, my little brother, KT, who you guys know, he was living with me. He was my roommate. What ended up happening was, I was playing poker for a living at the time, right? I was making good fucking money, good fucking money. I'm good at fucking poker. So, I'm playing poker, I'm making a good living. I would go and kick it with Rashad and his homeboys, who ended up becoming my homeboys, to keep it all the way 100% real with y'all because they always had bitches. It, they knew what the bitches was. They was good with women. They would always have a plethora of fucking females around them. So I was there to try to get like some drop off vagina. You know what I mean? Like shit that falls off the side of the main shit. And I just catch that with my penis. I'd be kicking it over there, man. And I'd had a whole bunch of crazy fucking adventures kicking it with them. It was fucking fun. It was a lot of fucking fun. Anyone who grew up in really bad neighborhoods who end up moving to real nice neighborhoods will tell you. Uh, the hood is dangerous and it's awful and it sucks. And a lot of people are in really fucked up situations, but it's fun. It is fun as shit, and it is never a boring fucking day. Now, moving into really nice neighborhoods like the one I was living in at the time, it was boring as fuck. There was never hardly any fucking thing to do. So, I would always have a great time hanging out with Rashad and his homeboys. Became friends with all of his fucking homies and shit. Now, one day, there was a cookout. I ate and Rashad was hosting the shit. There was a cookout at Rashad's house because I always used to go over to Rashad's house and kick it with him and his family. His mom was cool. She was trying to smash too for some goddamn reason. Like it was really funny too because like she'd be real mean, right? But then whenever I would come around, she'd be real nice and she'd go in the back room and put on makeup and shit, blah, blah, blah. She wasn't my type, you know? I probably should have smashed just to piss him the fuck off because he was an asshole. But I didn't. So I go over there, kick it with them. So on this day in particular, he hits me up. He's like, yo, we doing a cookout, man. You want to roll through. Now at the time, I did not have my license. I right? didn't have a car. So I'm like, yeah, I can roll through to the cookout if you come pick me up. He's like, yeah, I'll come pick you up, but I need gas money. I need that gas money. I was like, all right, cool. That's what's up. I'll throw you 20 bucks to come pick me up and to drop me back off at home later. He's like, oh, okay, cool, fucking, fucking awesome. The problem I had with Rashad uh, beforehand is he's a fucking, he's a low life, right? He's a lazy, low life motherfucker. I've had situations with him that you guys probably have never had with a person and run if you ever fucking do. We would go to the fucking mall and he, since he was always so fucking broke and I was making good money playing poker, I would help him out. Right? I remember one time we went to a fucking, uh, uh, we went to the mall. Hey man, I ain't got no bus money. He didn't have a car at the time. So I was like, all right, cool, here you go, man. I, gave, I threw him a $10 bill. And then later on when he was getting on the fucking bus, he accidentally, like when he took his hand out of his pocket, a $20 bill fell out. I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, oh no, man. I mean, you know, and he stuffs it back in his pocket real quick. Oh no, man, that's not what it, I mean, you know, that's for something else. I'm like, bruh, why'd you tell me you didn't have any money? If you had 20 fucking dollars. He's like, no, man, it's not a big deal, blah, blah, blah. I just let that slide. Whatever, okay. He's like my best friend, whatever, right? So, a couple of weeks later, we're at the Boulevard Mall. This dude's like, yo, man, hey, dude, can you get me some meat? I'm hungry. I haven't eaten in a couple of days. I'm so hungry. I'm like, yeah, man, I got you, bro. So, I got him some food. 
right? And then we uh, we're walking uh, out of the mall, and he sees this glasses fucking store. He goes up there and buys a pair of fucking glasses. Like my thing is this: if he'd have told me he like, hey man, I only got twenty bucks left, can I get five so I can get some food? I'd have given him the five to get food, right? The thing that pissed me off was you're gonna lie to me, and then gonna treat me like there's something wrong with me because I'm mad at you for lying to me in order to get me to give you money. When we walked outside, I'm like, bro, like, what was that bullshit? Like, how the fuck you gonna say you broke as fuck and you ain't got no money and you pull a fucking 20 out of your fucking pocket to get some glasses? He's like, what? No, what you tripping for, man? What you tripping for, cuz? What you tripping for, blah, blah, blah? That ain't that ain't no money, man. That ain't that big of a deal, blah, blah, blah. So I kind of made a mental note to myself then never to help this guy with money ever fucking again. Like two or three times, we would be at like a chicken place or some shit like that. He would ask me to give him some food. I would just start telling, I just start telling him no, no. No. You know, I could feel him a little bit pissed off at me because of that, you know, but like at the same time, he playing these games, you're doing us bullshit, so I'm not fucking helping you, right? Then, when he was living with his fucking homeboy, right? He's living with his homeboy. The guy didn't have a fucking place to stay. His homeboy let him live with him. This nigga was a legit struggle rapper. That was his goal. No bullshit. My nigga used to rap into a $20 mic that had a sock over it as a pop filter. And he'd make these awful fucking raps. And he would try to fucking sell the shit. One day this motherfucker, I could never forget this shit. This nigga hit me up and was like, yo, let's kick it. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I go to meet the dude up, and he tells me while we're walking around, like, man, dude, you should invest $1,000. I see you making good money playing poker. You should invest $1,000 into my rap career, homie. You should invest it. Bruh, why is it so, like, oh, like, what's fucked up is, like, that's like the third person to ask me to help him with his rap career. So, of course, me, I'm sitting there like, but nigga, you suck. Fuck no, I'm not giving you no money to make no struggle. Add insult to injury, nigga was one of the laziest motherfuckers I ever met in my goddamn life. As long as he had like five dollars for food and he a couple of females to smash, he didn't really fucking care about anything else. Fast forward to the cookout, right? He hits me up, I give him twenty dollars for gas. When he picks me up, he asks me for like an extra five dollars. Hey man, you should just throw twenty five in the tank. I'm like, no, no. No, nah, man, because he's already done that bullshit before where he's like played me out with the other fucking, with the, with the fucking money and shit. No, nah, man, no, nah, no. Nah. So he gets a little bit mad about that. So we go to the cookout and we have a good fucking time. It was his girlfriend's car. Her name was Shanae. This is her real name. Shanae and Rashad Banks, right? Dudes full of tattoos. We go to the goddamn barbecue and he cooks. He cooks the shit and the food is fucking delicious. Fucking delicious. The thing is, on the way up there, he stopped and went all the way to the other side of town to pick up a different friend of his, right? Some other dudes. We drive all the way back to his house, so of course by the time he's driving me home after the cookout's done, he's all out of fucking gas. Ain't got no fucking gas. Nigga gonna have another look back at me, hey Maurice, man, I'm gonna need some more gas money. I'm like, bro, I already put gas in the tank. Like, I'm not, nah. He looks at his friends and asks his friend for money, like, nigga, we broke. We all broke. So, I, I tell you, it does not pay to be the nigga with the money. Like, it doesn't, it's not awesome for people to know that you have money and you've been hanging out with fucking street niggas because this is what the fuck happens, right? Come on, man. Quit being stingy, dude. Maurice, come on, man. Throw some money in the tank. I'm like, nah, man. I'm broke, bruh. Like, earlier that day, my wallet fell and he was, like, looking in it and shit. It was a bunch of 20s or some shit. It was, like, maybe $200, $300 in there. He's like, nigga, you had hundreds in your wallet. How the fuck you broke? I'm like, what the fuck you doing looking in my wallet? He's like, milk, man, you stingy, bruh. Now, the thing is, I had bought all the food for the barbecue, right? So I tell him, I'm like, bruh, I bought all the food for the barbecue, and you want me to pay for gas, too? He's like, wow, what, you want a cookie? You want a fucking cookie? Which pisses me the fuck off. I hate it when motherfuckers do that bullshit. Like, there's something wrong with you for telling them that what you did was significant. Right? Like, you're not supposed to talk about the significant shit you did, which should keep you from having to do more shit. Like, people get pissed off. He's like, man, dude, you, man, you acting like a bitch right now. I'm like, bro, so I'm a bitch, but you the one driving your girlfriend's car and begging for the niggas in the backseat for fucking money. Right? Like, I, we the bitches, but, but you, but you the nigga who can't even afford to not live with his mama, with his girlfriend. 
Like, but we the bitches. And he got real mad, real quiet, right? So we pull up to my house. Like, the tensions was so fucking thick in the car. You could have cut that shit with a knife. I thought we was going to fucking fight. I figured this nigga was about to get out of his car and we was gonna throw the fuck down. Like, you know what I mean? We gonna fight. So after I close my door and I turn around, I look at him in the fucking, in the driver's side window, dude just looks at me and smiles. He's like, hey man, you have a nice night, bro. Stay up, bro. I'll see you later. And drives off. To which case, I was flabbergasted because I'm like, I thought he was fucking mad at me. I'm like, I thought we were supposed to fight. Like, what the fuck? So, of course, I'm just like, okay, well, Maybe I was wrong, you know? Maybe that wasn't the case. Okay, cool. I go in my house, man, and shit was cool. So four days later, I'm at the Orleans Casino playing poker, and I get a call from this nigga Rashad Banks, and he tells me, he's like, yo, I'm at this motherfucking party, bomb-ass party. Bitches, liquor, loud music, and in the background, I can hear a little bit of loud music and shit, but it sounds a little bit weird, a little bit off, right? He's like, yeah, man, I'm at this fucking party, bruh. I'm going to come pick you up and bring you to this party, which was already weird to me because this nigga's selfish as fuck. He's never told me about a party except for the day after this shit happened. He's never done anything like that, right? So I'm just like, okay, but nah, man, I'm not at home. You know, he's like, yeah, man, where you at, bro? I'll come pick you up. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm not at home right now. He's like, oh, okay, cool, man. Well, hey, see you later. I get a call from my brother about 15 minutes later. And my brother is hysterical. KT's hysterical. They took everything. They took, they, they took everything. And the minute he said that, I already knew what it was. This nigga Rashad robbed the house. You telling me there's bad bitches, fucking liquor, and, and fucking beautiful, great, great fucking music. And you want to leave the party to come pick me up and bring me to it. Oh, okay. My brother, he tells me, he's like, bro, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say anything, but I think it was Rashad. And before he even finishes, I'm like, bro, it was Rashad. You know, and he tells me, he's like, yeah, he called me 10 minutes ago and asked me if he wanted me to come pick me up from a, uh, and take me to a party. And he asked me if I was home and I told him I wasn't. And then five minutes later, when I'm walking home, I see all these fucking police cars and shit. The house got robbed. Now they stole everything of my brothers. They stole everything of his. They fucking cleaned him out. But me at the time, I was playing poker for a living, but I didn't have shit. I was sleeping on the air mattress. I had a broken computer, a broken Xbox 360. So at the time, I kept all my money in a secret compartment in my room, you know, and luckily enough, they didn't find that because you already know if you're a poker player, you lose your re-up money. You can't fucking play and make money no more. They didn't find that. And now this next part is about the fucking police and why we don't fuck with the police, okay? Why I don't fuck with the police. So the police get there. First of all, they don't dust for no fingerprints. They don't go through none of that crazy shit. You know, I tell the police I know who did it. This is who did it. I show them Facebook pictures of the guy. I give them the make and model of the car. I fucking give them the license plate number. I give them Facebook photos of the guy. Now, the guard had called the police when she saw them break into the house, which is how the police got there, right? She gave her description of what the guys look like to the police officer. So when I showed him the Facebook photos of the guy, the security guard was like, oh my God, yeah, that's him right there. The fucked up part about it is they had guns and it was three of them. Fucking, he brought his gangbanger friends. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Right, he's a wannabe gangbanger. So he made sure to bring his fucking gangbangers with him. Now the problem with all of this is they didn't wear any fucking masks from what the goddamn uh, security guard said. And they had guns. So basically they weren't planning on leaving any fucking witnesses. So I would have been murdered. If I was there, I probably would have been shot to fucking death. Because I would have been able to recognize him. Easy, right? I gave them everything. Everything! The shit that makes it so fucked up and so cold is they, the police officer, then goes out to his car, puts Rashad Banks' name in his car computer, brings up his fucking picture, matches it next to the Facebook photo, and then looks at the guy's arrest record because they can look up all of that shit in their car. He's sitting there looking at the shop, watching the motherfucker bring on the chef, and he says, oh, he's been jailed three times for home invasion. This is our guy. Hundred fucking percent. They look up his address, but you know what the police officer then turns to me and says? Well, now that we know that he's the one that robbed your house, and we know that you know that he's the one that robbed your house, if anything happens to him, you're going to be the first person that we come after. 
That's what they told me. Yeah, and that would make sense if they fucking did something. You know, if they actually went to the pawn shops and found my shit and linked it to the motherfuckers who brought it in. If they went to his house, questioned him, they did nothing. Nothing. So basically what they were telling me was, no, we're not going to do anything, but don't you do anything to him, you know, for robbing your house. Bruh, my whole thing is, what if my brother KT was there? What if my brother KT had gotten home five minutes earlier? Because when Rashad called, he said he was freaked out, so he walked home and found the house had been fucking robbed. If my brother had been there, he'd have killed him. What if my mom and my younger brother, Levrites, had been there? He'd have killed them too. Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So I'm fucking pissed. And then the cops gonna have her tell me, oh, well, if anything happens to him, then we know you did it. We'll, we'll come down. We know where you're at. We'll come get... So, so yo, so, so yo do some police work to come and pick me up for fucking him up, but you won't do any police work to pick up the motherfucker and, and, and to bring the nigga to jail who robs my house at gunpoint? We got witnesses, the, fu uh, the fucking security guard, we got all the fucking evidence in the world, everything, and you won't do shit. The, the fucking neighbors who were downstairs heard the commotion, came outside, they saw Shanae's car. They positively identified her car. Dark blue charger with blue rims. Identified the fuck out of the car, right? Come on, son. Like, they ain't do shit. And then motherfuckers wonder why when we run into the fucking police, number one, we don't fuck with them. Number two, if some fuck shit in the hood happens, we don't tell the police. Because if we go and fuck the dude up, then we gonna go to jail. I always wonder why in these crime shows and cops, no one ever talked to the police. Because the motherfuckers won't do their fucking jobs. They won't do shit about the crime, but... If, if anything comes up that you might have did something to the guy who did it, then you're going to fucking jail. Rashad starts calling my phone. There's no bullshit what he says, and I'm explaining to you what it means. He calls me, hey man, oh my god, dude, you need a ride home from the casino? I'm drunk as fuck, bro. I'm so fucking drunk. You need a ride home, bro? He's saying, hey. Do you know I robbed your house? Do you know it's me? Because if I know it's him, he thinks I'm gonna yell and scream at him and tell him and threaten to hurt him and all of this shit. He knows to duck me now, right? So, some may ask, well, why is he saying that he's drunk? It's because he knows that I'm smart enough not to get a ride home with someone who's so drunk they can't even talk on the phone properly. You know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna say, no, nah, man, I don't wanna ride home from someone who's fucking shit-faced drunk because that's a car accident waiting to happen. He's basically calling to see if I know if he robbed my house. And he calls me six more fucking times. Now, KT was dumb enough and updated his goddamn Facebook profile and basically said, Hey man, our house just got robbed. Fucking Rashad, who was looking at that shit, like, intentively to see if we posted about it, then calls me, hey man, just heard your house got robbed. Is everything okay? Basically what he's saying is, hey man, do you know it was me? Please tell me so I can know if I need to not go around you anymore. So of course I'm like, nah man, you know, oh yeah, our house just got robbed. You know, uh, we don't know who did it, but... The downstairs neighbors said they saw some weird looking Mexican people around the house before it got broken into. And the police said there's been a group of Mexicans running around breaking into houses. Sorry Mexicans, but shit, I threw, I threw somebody on the bus. Wasn't gonna be me, fuck it. So, he then is like, oh okay, cool, just let me know if you need a ride home, right? His conscience is at ease. He doesn't know that I know that he robbed my house, blah, blah, blah. You know, in my mind, I'm like, well, if I let this dude know that he robbed my house, then I won't get to whoop his monkey fucking ass. I won't get to show him how to wear three shoes. Two on his feet and one in his ass. And that shoe is still going to have my foot in it. Because my going to kick him in his ass all the way up there. Long intestine style, because I'm going to get all the way in there. What ended up happening was, I tried and I tried, guys. Okay, y'all got to give me some fucking credit. For like three months, I didn't whoop this dude's ass. Okay? So basically, to make a long story short, and I'll go into gross detail of what happened when that should happen in another video, but... Basically what happened was my brother KT was so spooked after the house got robbed, he didn't want to stay there anymore. He thought they were going to come back. So he went over to this crazy bitch's house who he had been talking to and stayed the night over there. Her baby daddy climbed through the window and basically tried to fucking shoot my brother to death. 
let off some rounds and everything. It was fucking bad. It was so bad that I went to sleep in my room. I knew they weren't gonna come back. I, I didn't give a fuck, like fuck it. So I'm, I'm sleeping in my bed about six o'clock in the morning. My room door gets kicked the fuck in. I freak the fuck out, cause I'm like, fuck, are they back? What the fuck is going on? I look up and KT is standing there. His legs are fucking covered in blood. He's dirty every fucking where. And he's got fucking streams of tears coming down his fucking face. And he starts screaming at the top of his lungs and punching my walls. I'm a fucking kill him! Oh, just started just freaking out. I'm like, what the fuck? He kicked the door clear off the hinges. What the fuck is going on? Y'all know KT's, he's, he's not as buff as he used to be right now because he cut a lot of weight. But like, he used to be huge. I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? What's wrong? What's wrong? He's like, man, they fucking, they, I, oh my, I, like I'm sorry, I'm tell y'all what happened in a different fucking story. But because Rashad robbing my house, brother KT almost got fucking murdered that night. And it was really fucking bad. Like, think of how bad it had to do for my brother to, to, to kick my door in and freak out like that. He's a strong dude, mentally and physically strong dude. And for it to take him to that point, it was bad and it was fucked up. For the next three, four months, I tried, guys. I tried so hard not to whoop his ass. I tried so hard and you gotta give me credit, man. It's like four months and and, and I'm doing everything I can because I'd, I'd heard from Medea you know, movies that, oh, forgive and forget, forgive, forgive, you don't forgive. Now, mind you, this entire time, at least once or twice a week, I'm talking to this guy on the phone, like we're best friends, because I want him to still think we're best friends. That way, if I ever want to whoop his ass, I can, I, he'll think we're friends, and he won't know I know, so I can go do it. So I'm talking to this guy, yeah, man, blah, blah, blah. I didn't even know I had it in me, man. I did not know I had it in me to act so fucking well, bro. Shit, man, I remember the day like it was yesterday. I was talking to one of my homeboys, Kavon, right? He's crazy, too. He's crazy all them fuck. He was like, bro, I told him the whole story. He's like, bro, you're going to fuck him up. I'm like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not, okay? I'm a better person than that. I, I don't do none of that no more. I'm a better person than that. I'm not going to whoop his ass. He's like, dog. Dog, because this is how the way he talks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you guys meet Kevon next time I go kick it with him. He's like, dog, 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 dog. you going to fuck him up. I'm like, no, no, I'm not. Okay, don't fucking tell me what I'm doing. I'm like, bro, you going to fuck him up. you going to whoop his ass. I'm like, no, I'm not. Okay, I've turned him a new leaf. I'm a good person. I don't do that. Okay, I'm done with all that violence shit. I'm not doing that no more. He's like, bro, you going to fuck him up. Call me when you fuck him up. I'm like, get out of here. All right? Man, two weeks later, bro, two weeks later after that, man, I, I started feeling bitch made, man. I started feeling like a, like a, like a bitch, even more so than I know I already am. I started feeling like a, like a fucking bitch. Like this guy robbed my house and tried to murder me and almost got my brother KT murdered too. That's his fault too. So mind you damn near murdered me and my fucking brother separately. I just started feeling like, am I a bitch? Like I started feeling heartbroken, yo. Like it hurt. It literally fucking hurt. It felt like fucking heartbreak. Cause I'm, I think it has something to do with the fact that I was still talking to this nigga, you know, so I could keep him comfortable in case I was gonna go whoop his ass. But in my mind, I was like, I knew I wasn't. I'm like, you ain't gonna go do that, okay? Because that's stupid, that's stupid. You make good money playing poker. At the time, I have I had custody of my younger brother, Levrites. So I'm like, I'm not gonna throw away custody of my younger brother and throw him into the foster system and then go to jail for some years for fucking this guy up, right? The shit's already done and over with and I had let it go, but that fucking heart pain just got worse and worse and worse. And then I see my brother, KT, I started feeling guilty. Like, like you let this dude get away with this. Like, you know where he is, you can go, you can get him. You, you're, you're letting him get away with this, you know? And I just I started feeling like shit. And it got to the point where I was like, man, going to jail would almost be better than feeling like this. Because in a sense, right now, I'm not even free. I'm not even out of jail, right? I feel like I'm in jail, in my own fucking head, in my heart. I felt like shit for letting this dude get away with that shit, man. And then I started questioning my own fucking, fucking guyhood and shit. I'm like, nigga, am, like, nigga, am I a bitch? Am I a fucking bitch for not whooping his fucking ass? I think I am a bitch. I think I'm a bitch. I think I'm a bitch in like the deepest sense of the fucking word.
Damn! It got to the point where legit, like, me going to jail for however many years of doing this fucking assault and battery would fucking, you know, premeditated assault and battery would get me in for, you know what I mean? Like, it, like none of this shit mattered, man. Fine! Fine! I'll whoop his ass. Fine. Fine. We were all separate friends, right? So I called this girl who was actually cute. Like, she was cute. She was a cute little hood chick. You know, light-skinned chick and shit, nigga. She had this fucking California tattoo right above her fucking vagina. Don't ask me why I know that's there. But she was cute. Mmm. Damn. It's one of my biggest regrets, man, is not, is not fucking her in his bed. It's one of my biggest regrets. <laughs> because she was with it. She was fucking with it. Because dude was like cheating on her and shit. They was always having their little arguments. So you already know my silly ass get up in there, crack some jokes. Uh, I remember I was at McDonald's. Called her 11.30 in the morning to see where he lived because I didn't know his address. Called him. And I'm talking to her on the phone and shit, chopping it up, man. We laughing and bullshitting. And she threw me the address. You know, she was giving that come over to my house right now and fuck me vibe. But at the time, I was so pissed off at him, I was like... You know, I don't want to put my penis in any hole that his has been in. You feel me? So I was like, I'm not, I'm, you know what I mean? I, I ain't even, I wasn't even thinking that. I was so, I was so pissed at this dude for doing this shit and nearly getting my brother killed that I was, I was so mad I couldn't even be horny. I'm a perverted dude. I'm horny. This is a bad bitch. She was. And I was so fucking pissed off, I wasn't even thinking about fucking. And that's how you know I was pissed. I was like, nigga, fuck you and your fucking fleek ass titties. I don't give a fuck about your shaved ass vagina, nothing. Because he was talking about some freak shit over the phone. But I knew, like, talking about that freak funny shit was the best way to get her to open up to me. Right? You know? And not her legs. But, you know what I mean? Like, give me the address and all, and tell me all this shit. She let me know, like, yeah, you know, he... He's at work right now. He gets off at 5.30. Call him then. This is our address. Bruh. She, she gave up all of that shit. <laughs> so I waited till like 5.30, man, and I called him. I'm like, yo, what you up to, bruh? What you doing, bruh? Dude, we need to kick it. Huh? And he's like, yo, man, yeah, we could definitely kick it. Anyone who's anyone knows, one of the things that you learn in the hood is keep your nose closed, right? Never have your nose wide open. And basically what that shit means is, if it looks, if it sounds like it's too good to be true, it usually fucking is, okay? Easy shit comes at a way worse price than just shit that costs stuff to get. That's why I'd rather just pay for the shit up front. Anything I get, I don't accept favors. Anything I get, I always pay for the shit up front. And if it sounds like it's too good to be true, I don't even fucks with it, right? Because this is what I told him. This is what I told the dumbass. I told him this. I'm like, yo, I got this guy that I've known for like a year and a half, right? Guy makes insane amounts of fucking money. He went to Costa Rica for a vacation. He moved there for a little bit. He be there for a couple weeks, right? I know this guy keeps at least 20 G's in his crib cash because he plays poker like me, all right? You know, if you're down, we'll go over there. You go in there and take all the fucking monies, and I and we'll just split the shit down the middle, right? So this dude is like, oh my god, really? Yeah, come over, man. We'll talk about it, dude. I'm like, all right, cool. He's like, yeah, man, bring some swishers and some liquor, and yeah, we'll do it. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, no problem at all, right? Now, of course, I'm lying my ass off. I would never do that to anyone I fucking knew, you know, because karma is a bitch, which you guys are about to learn firsthand. Uh, but I got his nose wide open. Like he, he's gonna stay home and he's gonna be so focused on getting this money over at the uh, this easy money over at the dude's house. He's not even gonna see that I'm planning on teaching him how to wear three shoes out this bitch. It's gonna be terrible. I'm gonna have both feet in his ass. You know what I mean? You ever seen somebody like fucking stomping on grapes and shit? I'm gonna be like that inside of his butt. Just uh, 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 I'm gonna be mashing grapes in his ass. It's gonna be terrible. That sounds awful. That sounds suspect. Okay? 
But I'll do that if it if it allowed me to fuck him up because he deserved it so fucking bad. Okay, so I go over to his house, right? And I knock on the door and he opens the door and he had just got done plowing out his girlfriend Shanae. You can tell he just got done fucking. You know, he's got pajama pants on and shit. You know, you could see the outline of his shit. You know, he's got no shirt on and shit. You could just tell, right? So I'm like, yo, dude, go take a shower, right? Clean yourself up, get dressed, you know what I mean? And we'll, you know, we'll go do this. I did not know at the time that his girlfriend was involved in my robbery, in me being robbed. Didn't know she was involved, but she was. This is what he tells me. He's like, yo, man, hey. Dude, I remember your apartment, man. You got a nice apartment. I'm about to move from here. Is it cool if I come live with you? You got a free room. We should be roommates. We're already real good friends. We should live together. Basically, what he's telling me is, you a pussy. And I'm going to fuck again. I'm going to get my whole body inside of you. You are the biggest pussy. That's what he's telling me. I'm going to rob you again, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rob you again. You, you bitch, man. I'm going to rob you. Uh, so I took real big offense to that. I'm like, oh, word? Okay, word. So, um, he goes, he gets his girl after he gets out the shower. And I'm like, no, 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 just you. I don't want your girl coming because I don't know her like that. You know what I mean? I don't trust her with the information I'm about to tell you. He's like, oh, okay, cool. Just me and you. Now, what he didn't know was that I had, uh, driven to his apartment complex beforehand, parked my car behind a big-ass fucking semi-truck. Don't know why it was there. Parked my car in a big, behind a big-ass semi-truck. And now I took him in the, I'd gone in the back and cased the joint because I used to live in those same fucking apartments. You know, it's over on Lake Mead in fucking Hollywood. I'm not going to tell you where, but that's where it's at. You know, not the address, but that's where exactly where it's at. So these, these apartments were awful. So I know the place pretty fucking well. So I go in back of his apartment and I'm looking for places where I could take him and have a little bit of alone time with him. You feel me? Huh? Some time, some time so we could talk about what you should and shouldn't do to your best friends. You feel me? So when I went back there, I found this big ass trash can receptacle that they keep the big ass dumpsters in. You see, you see the fucking dump trucks, they come, they stick their two latches in and they fucking pick up the trash can and put it down. And now the thing that they always kept those in, the fucking things with the big ass metal gate with the lock on them, that is where I was gonna take them, you know? So, what happened was, I finally get him out the house, he gets dressed and shit, man, we're walking and shit, I'm talking to him and telling him, you know, yeah, man, blah, 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 blah. So, when I'm walking with him around the back, because in his mind, I'm just taking him someplace private, so we could talk about this shit. So, we get back there, and, uh, and unfortunately for me, there was an Escalade that had recently driven back there, and just parked itself in the middle of all the fucking parking spaces. Very fucking ominously looking, right? Very ominous looking, very. So, tinted windows, candy paint, rainbow fucking colors on the rims. I don't know what this mother, it looked like a fucking, a clown rapper is what it's called. It's like a, a clown car that belonged to a rapper. That's what the fuck this shit looked like. So, um, I'm walking and I'm, you know, explaining to him the situation and shit, and I'm taking him into, like, you know, towards the trash receptacle thing, and, you know, I, we get there, and, uh, um, and he's not, he's not, he stops, he fucking stops, halfway there, he fucking stops, you know, and he, I can see he's looking at the fucking Escalade, and he looks at me, and he starts to feel it, he starts feeling it, right, now, the best way to explain it is that, even the dumbest of fucking people, even if they're fucking consciously stupid, which he was, uh, your subconscious mind can instinctually pick up danger, right? His subconscious mind started probably saying amongst itself, you've robbed this guy. Yeah, he's your friend, but you've robbed him at gunpoint. You were trying to kill him and now you're following him into the desolate part of your apartment complex towards who's in that fucking escalade 
who's in that candy paint Escalade? And to make it matters even worse, the Escalade was bumping music loud as fuck. Does this guy know that you fucking robbed him? Like, is this a setup? Is this a setup? Right? Even though he was utterly stupid, he was still, anyone who's lived in the areas he's lived has got to be smart enough to understand you could possibly be getting fucking set the fuck up. I believe the thing that kept him from running was the fact that he thought that, you know, I was bitch made because if I had known he robbed my house, then I would have yelled at him already. I'm not going to calmly talk to him for months. I'm not going to talk to him and high five him and crack jokes with him in his house a second ago. You know, I'm going to be mean and crazy about this and loud and shit, you know, because, you know, that's what, you know, punk asses do. They freak the fuck out and yell and scream and shit. So what happened was uh, the guy stops dead in his fucking tracks. He stops. He's like, starts like looking around and shit. Starts getting like spooked and freaked out. He's like, hey, bro, let's go in the house and talk about this, right? So I'm like, when he says that, I'm just looking at him. I'm not looking mad. I'm just looking at him, right? Trying to figure out a way, like, damn, how can I get him back here to this damn trash receptacle? I'm trying to think, right? And I'm thinking, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, I'm not coming up with nothing. And he's looking at me, I'm looking at him. And in the midst of this, he cracks the smallest of smiles. He's like, And, man, when he smirked, I would love to say I blacked out, but I didn't. I was 100% coherent. What it was was, man, when he smirked, that shit reminded me of how my brother almost got murdered and how he tried to murder me. And Because my brother's legs are still fucked up after that, right? He wears wraps all the time. It, it happened in the story that I have to tell you about, but his legs got fucked up getting away from the guy with the gun who was shooting at him right for fucking his baby mama even though they weren't together like it was it was fucking bad right because my brother he went through like four to six months of really intense pain and i would see and hear him go through that and i felt guilty because you know i was the person who brought rashad over to the apartment Right? You know, if I'd never brought him over there, then he wouldn't have known where we lived out to rob me. You know, I, it was my poor judgment of character that got my brother injured. And to keep it all the way 100% real with y'all, I never thought in a million years that I was going to fuck him up. I never thought in a million years I would have asked. My way over there, I'm think, I'm saying, yo, I'm going to fuck him up, I'm going to fuck him up, I'm going to fuck him up. But layers deeper than that, in my mind, I'm like, bro, I'm just doing this to make myself feel better about the situation. So in my mind, I was like, okay, if I go over there, and at least act like I was going to fuck him up. I feel like less of a bitch for not fucking him up. You see what I'm saying? But when he smirked, man, all that shit just went out the fucking window. And next thing I know, my fist was inside of his face. It was not good. One of the most one-sided fights I've ever fucking been a part of. Now, mind you, this guy, he's a big bad gangbanger and he said he's fucked people up and, and beat people up. He's one of those tough sounding dudes, so I thought he was gonna do something more of what he did. At that point, I really didn't fucking care. Details of what happened, right? Because that's what y'all are here for. First thing I did, just BAH! I put the strength of everything I'd ever learned about fighting into that goddamn punch and he, he didn't fall. He did not fall. I'll give him that. Maybe I'm weaker than I think, which is actually probably just the truth. I'm probably just not nowhere near as strong as thinks someone of my size should be. You know, so when I hit it, I cause I got right on the fucking face too, just right here. Bah! Just knocked the shit out of him. And he's like, oh, oh, oh. Like, he's so much of a bitch. This is how bitch made he is. I hit this guy, right? And when I hit him, Right here, he got turned with the punch and started trying to stagger off and started trying to run. He, goes, <laughs> he tried to fucking run like a bitch, like just hands sprawled out like a hoe. Like <laughs> so I ran up on him, you know, from behind, got a hold of his neck. And y'all know, you know, I've done some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know what I mean, some Judo, some, you know what I mean, a couple of those things. Just, just a tad bit, right? 
But one of my favorite moves that I learned in jujitsu and judo is the hip throw. You get your center of gravity behind theirs and you basically flip them over that bitch. So that's what I did. But it was not the way it looked in the movies. Actually, all it was was me uh, putting my hip behind his hip and taking my hand and fucking pushing his face, grabbing onto his face and pushing it with everything I was fucking worth. And because of that, his feet just plain left off the ground right into the fucking air and he fell skull first into probably some of the hardest concrete in Vegas because their concrete's uneven. It's like that concrete with the rocks in it. Like, and I don't, and when I tell you his head hit the ground with probably the worst fucking sound I've ever fucking heard. I'm telling you, I don't know how he got back up. How was he not knocked clean out? Again, I'm probably just a whole lot weaker than I give myself credit for. Now that he's down, skull first on the fucking pavement, and he's looking up, I get on top of him and I straddle him, right? So he can't fucking get out, he can't run. And I just lock in with my legs and start, start wet, just giving it to dude. Stop. Ah, ah. Now he's so punch drunk, which is a boxing term, as where, where you're so dizzy from getting fucked up, you've got vertigo and you can't really coordinate yourself that well. He bucks me off and tries to run, but like I said, he's so fucking punch drunk from taking so many unanswered shots to the face. This was his attempt at escape, and it was just as fast as I make it look right here. I run up on him and I do the same shit. Hip throw him. Dude falls skull first into the pavement again, probably in the same damn spot, right? On his fuck, on the back of his fucking head. Bah! Fucked up. I don't know how, how he's still conscious at this fucking point. But this is the funny part of the fight. So I'm holding him down with my, with my fucking left. And I'm just wailing into this dude's fucking face with the fucking right hand. At one point, he starts like blocking my punches, right? Because he's got two hands and I've only got one fist because my other hand is holding him down. So he starts blocking his face real well, like, you know, like this. He can't see, but I can't hit his face. I can't tell you how fucking enraged him not allowing me to continuously beat his face in with my fist made me. I was so pissed because you robbed my house and fucking tried to murder me and almost got my brother fucking murdered and fucked his legs up. I got so fucking pissed off that I got off of him, right? I got off, I got off of him. Now, mind you, he's blocking his fucking face like this really well, right? Can't hit him in the face. But all of this shit's exposed. No bullshit. This is exactly what I do. I do this bullshit. I don't know where the fuck I learned this at. I don't know why I decided to do this. I guess I've been watching too many goddamn Bruce Lee or, or, or fucking fighting movies. This is what the fuck I do. I get up and I jump as high as I can into the air and come down directly on his rib cage with both my fucking feet. Like, <laughs> just right on his fucking ribs, both fucking feet. This dude's reaction was that of a tube of toothpaste that got slammed in the middle and both the sides, his eyes fucking dart open, his fucking arms flail off his face. Oh, 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 oh. Fucking hilarious. So, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is violent, man. But like I said, dude, he fucking tried to murder me and my family, man. Damn near got my brother killed, dude. I was pissed. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. So I get back on top of dude, man, and I just start fucking wailing on him again, dude. Just start giving him a taste, but only with the right. Trifling fucking bitch. Have you ever been in a fight where your opponent posed such little immediate danger that you start talking to him while you're fucking him up, right? And I'm not even really talking to him. I'm just, I'm telling him how I feel about 
about what he did to me. I fucking loved you, man. Look what you gonna fucking do. You're making me do this to you. It was gonna rob my fucking house. I thought we were fucking friends, man. Matter of fact, what time does friends come on? You listen to me when I'm fucking you up. So yeah, needless to say, man, it was, it was kind of rough on him. He bucks me off by turning over and he tries to run again. And this shit was, was too fucking funny. It's really fucked up, but it's funny. Like I was so fucking pissed and filled with rage. I ran and I grabbed the dude and I literally picked this guy up from the back and threw him. Like just, he literally, he literally flew. And when I say flew, I mean his arms were sprawled out like fucking Superman. <laughs> Dude, the guy literally fucking flew a couple of feet. I don't know where I got the strength from because I'm not that damn strong. I'm not, I'm not really buff. I, I'm just mad. I, feel, I guess I went super saiyan on this nigga. But I just didn't know because I don't have hair for it to turn yellow. Like that's, <laughs> like my eyebrows and mustache turn yellow and shit. Like the fact that I haven't shaved, all this shit starts glowing and shit. I'll do this sack of shit. And he had, he was so punch drunk and had so little strength left from getting beaten fuck up. He landed face first onto the pavement and the rocks and slid with probably one of the most hilarious sound effects I've ever heard anyone make when they hit pavement and slide. No bullshit, this is the exact sound he makes. It's literally the sound. It was fucking funny as shit. So, uh, now the thing that's kind of sad about that is he was so punch drunk, he didn't have enough strength to make, like, to put his arms down so that they broke his fall. He landed face first and slid. <laughs> so, I run over to him, man, and I flip him over, and I, I, I go to fucking punch him again, but before I can, he fucking leans over and spits out, like, the biggest fucking glob of blood. Just blurts this huge ass fucking glob of blood out that's super fucking thick. And that's when I notice that this whole side of his face is lumped up. Because I've only been hitting him with my right hand and holding him down with my left. This whole side of his face is lumped. His eye is swollen closed and lumped in the middle. And blood is like coming out of this slit right here and shit. Hit this side of his mouth has got all busted and shit. He's got blood coming out of his fucking mouth. And he just, and he, he, he just with all of the energy he probably had left, he starts yelling out, Okay! Oh, oh, okay! Okay! I'm sorry! Okay! Like, you robbed my house, man. You tried to kill me. You tried to kill my brother. You tried, you fucking tried to murder me, bro. And then you had the nerve when you got away when you tried to do it again. So, no. I'm not, I'm not sorry. I keep punching this nigga in the fucking face. Hold him down. Keep giving him a fucking taste, man. What the fuck? I'm not, what, oh, so, oh, mercy for you, bitch. Yeah, no mercy for my house when you was robbing me, man. I needed that stuff. All right, shit. I ain't have nothing else. Damn it. Now, a lot of you guys are probably wondering, well, Maurice, it could have not had been him who robbed your house. Which I would love to think is a possibility. Except for one of the biggest key elements, aside from the fucking guard positively identifying him in the goddamn, or from the Facebook photo I showed her. I had an Xbox 360 at the time. One of the only things, matter of fact, I think it was the only electronic thing not stolen was that Xbox 360 because it had Red Ring of Doomed three weeks prior and I brought him over my house. He's like, hey man, let's play some Xbox 360. And I'm like, oh bro, man, that's just broke. It's hella broke. It Red Ring of Doomed, it's never gonna work again. It's broke as fuck, it's useless. You know what I mean? It wasn't even touched. It was not touched. My computer, they, they stole that. They stole everything else, everything else. But that Xbox 360, how the fuck would a random ass burglar know that that shit didn't work? Was this nigga plug it in and try it before he fucking tried to, before he picked it up and tried to run with it? Really? Really, nigga? I'm forgetting the most damning evidence. His best friends told me he did it. His best fucking friend. And his goddamn baby mama, and his baby mama fucking sister who I'm still cool with till this day. Man, your baby mama's still friends in the motherfucker on Facebook, bitch. I know we gonna see this. I hope you see it. So, with that being
being said, you know, I'll keep on punching his face and that, and I'm like, you know what? This is enough, all right? He's been fucked up enough. I'm done. I'm done whooping. I'm done with this ass whooping. I'm done fucking him up, okay? This dude is clearly wearing three shoes right now, okay? It's all the way into his ass and lower intestines. It's in there. So I tell him, look, you stay down, okay? Or else I'm gonna come back. And then you're gonna be wearing four shoes. One of the biggest reasons why I stopped is I started hearing sirens. I thought the police was coming. I'm like, oh, 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 that's, that's, that's my time. <laughs> so, hop in my car, drive off, right? But I had to, when I drove off, I had to pass by uh, his apartment. Bro, tell me why I saw this nigga walking back to his apartment. Probably the saddest fucking thing I've ever seen in my goddamn life. Like the way he was holding himself. Like I swear to God, this nigga was crying. It was fucking hilarious. I swear, in my mind, I started hearing the sad violin music when he was walking back, but it was hilarious to me because ain't nothing to feel sorry about this motherfucker phone. Nigga, you stole all my shit. You tried to ride, you tried to fucking murder me because if I was there, you would have killed my ass. I wouldn't be a YouTuber if I had went home early, tried to murder my brother. If he had been home, you'd have fucking killed him too. It wouldn't wear no mask, son. And they got guns and the friends and friends with and the people he brought were legit gangbangers. Fuck no, I don't feel bad for you, bitch. I hope you got long lasting injury off that shit. Try to kill your friends for not help for not investing in your rap fucking mixtape. I feel like that's the reason why he tried to kill me. Cause I wouldn't invest thousand dollars in his fucking rap mixtape. But he's the real life struggle rapper. What's what's the rap name? He's the real life young child support. My nigga for real, if you guys saw the skit I did, this nigga for real tried to bars us. Like he tried to murder me. Fucking bars me and shit. So, this nigga's walking back to his house. It was the most hilarious shit I've ever seen in my life. Now, I ended up running into his baby mama's older sister. I'm not gonna mention none of their names. She's actually motherfucking cute right so i'm talking to her and shit man chopping it up you know and i told and like she told me she's like bro like what the fuck happened with with, Rash with rashad bro like why did you do him like that i'm like what are you talking about she's like you fucking why did you have so many people do that to him i'm like what are you, people what are you talking about she's like yeah rashad told me and everybody else that you jumped in with 10 people i'm like word i fucked him up that bad as to where it's like he had, yeah, like, like he said 10 people did him? Damn! Bruh, I forgot to tell y'all. Dude, tell me why, like, uh, uh, like four or five days later, my brother hit me up. Cause my brother wanted to fuck him up too, but KT's a nicer person than me. He's like, bruh, you shouldn't do this, don't do this. You know, I'm not, I'm not even, I don't want nothing to do with it because karma, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, KT, I completely understand, you know, but I'ma fuck him up. He's like, yeah, man, do you, do you, but I'm not gonna do nothing because karma is a bitch. I'm like, yeah, karma is a bitch. I understand completely, right? He let it go. I don't know how the fuck he let it go. I couldn't. I don't know. Maybe because he just, you know, he went through it, but like, I felt like it was my fault that it happened. Tell me why, four or five days later after I beat his ass, uh, uh, KT come calling me and he's like, 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 bro, what the fuck did you do to him? I'm like, what are you talking about, bro? He's like, he's at the hospital. He's at the hospital. And I'm like, I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? He links me to the Facebook post. His girlfriend, Shanae, who actually turned out to be the fucking driver to my, who drove him to my house to rob me, right? Found that shit out later. Um, she tagged him in a post of her taking him to the hospital. He ended up, uh, having, uh, two concussions, uh, broken nose, busted eye socket, uh, fucked up lip, four broken ribs. <laughs> three or four broken ribs. It was either three or four. It was, it was definitely one of them. Let's just say, uh, he learned a very valuable lesson to shut the fuck up on robbing people who know where you live. Who rob people who know where you live, man? And what's really crazy is, I know where his mom lives. I know where his mom lives. I never went over there, never, you know what I mean? Like if I saw his mom today, I would still be nothing but polite to her. You know, I would still respect her as, as my elder, you know, I'd still be super duper nice to her. And she always really, 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 really liked me. Probably way too much she was trying to fuck me, even though she had a husband, like it was, 
<laughs> you know, if I ever saw her little sister, you know, I'm real nice to his baby mamas. I see his, his uh, if I ever saw his little sister again, I'd be super duper nice to her. There's no reason for me to take any of my disgruntledness out on any of his family, even though he saw fit to do that to me, you know? But, uh, but yeah, man, I think she ended up throwing him out after she found out he did that because I made sure to uh, text his mom and let his mom know what he did. And she threw him the fuck out because of that shit. Good job, bro. Not only are you fucked up, but you're homeless too. Good job, nigga. I don't think there was ever a better story of crime not fucking paying than this. Because it didn't fucking pay for him. Then I ran into his homeboy selling weed on the strip. Not me, but he was selling, his homeboy was selling weed on the strip. This dude was cool as fuck, man. Now I don't really remember his name, so of course I can't, actually I do remember his name. Can't say his name, no, I'm not gonna do him like that. But he was cool as fuck. Ran into homeboy selling weed on the strip in front of the Paris one night. You know, was talking to him and shit. After I told him, yeah, but that nigga Rashad robbed my house. I was like, he said he didn't do it. The homie looked at me because like, like the dude Rashad is bitch made as fuck and was like ratting and snitching on his own fucking homies and shit. Like they would all do crime together, Rashad would get caught and tell on everyone. Like word, word. The dude, like, it was just so fucking crazy, and the dude was telling me, he was like, yeah, man, he ain't about that street shit. He's not about this street shit, and I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, bruh, him and his homeboy who let him live in his house for free for two years. Two years for free, went free. Him and that homeboy went to Walmart, stole a television. I forgot which one took, like, what was running with the television, but they split up. One of them got caught. Well, actually, Rashad got caught. Right? Tell me why, when the dude got to his house, the police were there waiting for him. They were there waiting for him with Rashad in the car because he snitched on him. Real shit. Ain't that a bitch? So the dude was like, Yeah, man, he ain't about this shit, yo. And then, you know, my house got robbed like six months before yours did, and I think it was him. You know, I messaged everybody on his Facebook feed and told them all what he did. And this nigga gonna have to text me and say, Why are you telling people? Quit telling people. When I was driving home from whooping his ass, my homeboy like calls me. You know, it was Kevon. He's like, Yo, what you up to, bruh? I'm like, Man, man, shit. He's like, you fucked him up, didn't you? I'm like, like, man, fuck you. He just starts busting out laughing. So then the dude Rashad calls me, right? The first thing he says, I'll never forget it. Nigga, I'm gonna kill you. I got killers in these streets, boy. I'm in the hood, nigga, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna fucking kill you, nigga. I'm like, look, 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 look. First of all, you ain't gonna do shit, all right? You don't know where I live, okay? You don't know where I kick it. You don't know shit about me, all right? But I know where you live. And I know where all your people live at. So all I'm gonna do, so I'm like, look, like, so look, just shut the fuck up. Alright? So look, all I ask, and I know you robbed my house. All I ask is that if you see my family and any of my family, any friends, any people I know, you run the other way. Don't go anywhere near any of my peoples. Alright? Ever. If you do, you're gonna be wearing them four shoes, homie. I'm gonna you, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you another pair of shoes to wear in your ass, you know? And he he was like, okay. You know, and after that, stop talking to him. And it really, really hurt me to have to, like, fuck him up like that. It really, really hurt me deeply to have to whoop his ass like that. Because I had so many good memories with the dude. We, I've known this nigga for fucking damn near 10 years. We've done so much shit to fucking gather, dude. Like, and that's one of the things that made, that pissed me off so bad about the situation is because the because this, because you did this shit, we can't even be cool no more. And I really want to be. We can't be cool no more. I can't talk to you ever again. I can't kick with you. I can't be cool with you at all. And it's your fault. You know, and I was just really, 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 really pissed off. But, you know, I saw him like four or five more times after that, and I never touched him again. You know, because I felt like if I would have whooped his ass again, I already beat his ass. He already understands. You know, that would be just bullying. You know, that would be bullying. You know, it ain't even about that. Actually, Josh. Uh, was there when I when we saw him again at the Boulevard Mall? I'm not gonna go into gross detail because that's gonna I'll tell that in a different story. Only if y'all want me to, you know what I mean? Like if this video receives enough love, man, I'll tell y'all the rest of the stories of me running into him, you know, and and what happened on those times, and on how my brother damn near got murdered because of of him again. But yeah.
You know, um, you know, I, I was like, man, you know, I saw him all those times, and you know, I ain't even fuck him up. Of course, he ran, he ran for his life. But I was like, I ain't even gonna do nothing. I ran, whoop your ass. You already understand, you know, like it's, if I do it again, it's just bullying. I'm not gonna bully you, bro. I'm not. You know what I mean? This is not high school, you know, but you did try to murder me and my family and you robbed my house at fucking gunpoint and you're a disgusting fucking human being. I just can't believe somebody that I've been friends with for so fucking long that I've done so much for financially. Financially, I've done so much for this fucking dude, man. Like a couple of nights, he ain't had no place to stay. I got him a hotel fucking room. Like we'd gone on so many adventures together, man. We, like we would tag team. No, 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 no. That sounds like we Eiffel Tower and hoes. That's not what I mean. I mean we like we would we kick it together and shit, and then we would go find females. He take one, I will take one to different rooms. You know what I'm saying? Like it would you know shit like that. Like we was we was tight. We was homeboys, but you know what I mean? Like that's that's what he decided to do, bro. And that shit, that shit really hurt, man. That shit hella hurt me, yo. Like, I'm not gonna have somebody on my team who's who's not riding for me, you know, who's actually trying to, like, fuck me up or do me dirty. If it makes sense, and it might not make no sense to y'all, I saw it coming. I saw the, the envy and all of that shit in him, and I knew he was capable of doing it, but I never thought in a million years he would do that to me. You feel me? Never in a million years did I ever think that my homeboy would do that shit to me, yo. And I ain't even gonna lie, though. Like, I kind of feel a little bit like tearing up and shit, because that shit really, really fuck with me. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you know, like, that's just what it is. It taught me a very valuable lesson, man. And even to this day, I don't really bring very few. I bring very few people to my house. That's real. I don't really let people know where I live at anymore, especially after that. So, but yeah, man. You know, uh, his baby mama's sister and shit, you know, she cute, still talk to her on Facebook. His baby mama, she cute too, still talk to her. <laughs> Actually, I kicked it with them like fucking, uh, what was that, like three months ago? Yeah, man, we met at uh, UNLV and we kicked it for a minute. You know, they cool, they cool as fuck. They like me more than they like him. It's hilarious. <laughs> it is utterly fucking hilarious. Be careful, bro. Be careful, man. You know, one thing I learned from that, man, if you start doing well, leave hood people in the hood. And I know it sounds bad, and it sounds like it sucks. You, you, you have to, yo. And if you do still fuck with them, the best case scenario is they don't know that you're doing well. Shut the fuck up with that. You better start faking struggle. Start bringing up, man, do any of y'all let me borrow $150, man, I can't pay my rent this month. You better start lying. Because if they know you're doing super duper well, man, that envy, all that shit, man, and people in the hood, you know, at least like, you know, criminal type people who do fucked up shit, they start seeing your ass as a lick. You fuck around, get robbed, shot the fuck up. I done heard of that shit happening like at least three, four, five, six different times with people I know. You know, personal situations, they get fucking, you know, murdered or shot at or robbed at gunpoint from someone they knew. Yeah, man, be careful out there. Again, you know, I'm not no street crazy violent dude. You know, I'm not no tough thug, I'm not none of that shit. You know what I mean? Like, when you put in that type of situation, man, like, you know, you just react. I am a reaction channel. I, I just, I reacted. I reacted. But, um, there's some other shit that I left out because I didn't want to make this video too long. Uh, some other stuff that, you know, happened between me and him that I did to him. Like, I'm gonna put that in different stories. I'll tell that in a different story if you guys want to know. I'll, like, make a whole entire video clearing up everything. But, um, but yeah, man. You know, hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, uh, if you did, make sure to comment, like, and or subscribe. You know, this is your boy Blasphemous AZ. Let me know if y'all want me to tell more stories uh, of shit that I have been through. And trust believe, it is all fucked. <laughs> but again, if you're the police, this is fake. It's all entertainment, baby. Twisms.